pan fried steak in an air fryer. I think this might be a jelly exclusive. I've never seen it before, but I ran into a problem with the Ninja the other night on one of my other videos. If you'll look, I did a steak in it and the pan kind of bowed up. So it got me to looking at different ways and different pans to use and it dawned on me. A black cast iron skillet. And I've got two sitting out there and I'm going to explain that and tell you why you can do either one. But long story short, with the Ninja digital air fry oven, and honestly, I probably could do it with my Breville smart oven air, but I have not tried it. This will be the third steak I've cooked in this. And I'm going to tell you, it is, has been one of the best steaks I've cooked at my house. And I have sous vide, I have green eggs, I've got a lot of things. This is the most quickest easiest and simplest, fewest steps that, that you're going to find for, I promise you, the way a lot of restaurants cook steaks that is absolutely excellent. And uh, like I said, this is my third steak, and there, there's still some tweaking maybe to go on, and we're going to do some tweaking tonight. I've got a USDA Prime uh, ribeye from Sam's, the whole loin. We're not going to use that. I'm going to put that in my dry ager later. I'm going to cut off some steaks for tonight, though. Anyhow, we're fixing to see. I'm fixing to show you what I think is the best way to cook a steak in your house, especially if you have one of these or the Breville. I'm John Sanders, also known as Jelly007. Now hold on, and I'll be right back to show you what I think is, and I think you will too, the best steak you've ever ate. All right, to go over a couple of things right quick, the skillets. That is a 10-inch 10, 10 skillet. It doesn't have a name for anybody. I, I, I bought it at a yard sale, but I love it for searing. It's a great slick bottom uh, skillet. It sears excellent. Now, here's one. If you like stripes on your steak, then this Calphalon right here is uh, the one you'd want to use. It measures 11 and a quarter inches diagonal. Now, I, I, we're not using that. I, I don't particularly like for, I don't, not that I don't like, I like to see the stripes. I just don't think you get as good of a sear as you do in a slick bottom. And honestly, I know we're not using this tonight. I just wanted to show you that it does fit. I have tested it in both the Ninja and the Breville. And I've also tested this one in the Ninja and the Breville. And it fits with ease in both of them. And it really, really works well. Here's the meat we're going to use. It is a USDA Prime from Sam's Club. I'm going to dry age that loin. But this is my dry ager, the rack out of my dry ager. And it is a little bit too big. I need airflow on both sides. So we're going to cut it about right here. So I'll get two or three steaks out of that. I'm going to dry age. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to vacuum seal a couple of them. And we're going to cook one of these tonight. So I'm about to get that started. I'll explain what we're going to do with the bread at the end, which is put it in that skillet and all those juices and toast it over. And take my word, so far so good from what I've done with that. It has really been good. Again, I'm going to try and touch on this in a minute, even though if you done heard it, avocado oil is absolutely a must in this recipe. I'm going to get that started, and I'll see y'all in just a second. Okay, so here is the piece we'll be working with tonight. And I'm going to cut off a piece, say, right here. I'm probably going to go a little thicker than what I've been doing, because I've been buying them out of my uh, grocer's well, you know, meat case, and they've been about three quarter. Well, I'm going to about one inch tonight. I don't want to go too far and, uh, you know, not not knowing what to expect. So we're going to cut about a one inch off, and you can see that's a beautiful USDA Prime. Look at the marbling. I mean, it's a pretty piece of meat. It's got a little extra fat right there, but with a ribeye, that's what you want. And by the way, I, I mentioned my dry ager, and if you don't know what one is, if you've ever been to a really high-end steakhouse and paid a whole lot of money for a steak, that, that's what they do. They, they do it the same thing. I have a little, little refrigerator thing here that's made for dry aging steak, and you put the whole loin in. You leave it in for, say, 28 to 48 to whatever number of days you want to leave it, honestly. And then you take it out. You trim off all the excess stuff that gets kind of cruddy, and then you have some of the best steaks you'll ever have. It's a really neat device. I have some videos on it if you want to look back in my stuff. But there's plenty of videos on YouTube about dry aging steak. But that's got nothing to do with what we're doing tonight. We're not doing dry age. 
we're just doing USDA Prime, and that is pretty. And we're fixing to cut that up. I'm fixing to cut that into a steak, and we're fixing to get this started. I'm going to be short and sweet. I, I know some of you have already seen this, but I, it's real important on this recipe because we're going to get that skillet really hot. And most of the time, people are doing this indoors. Now, smoke points. That's what you want to pay attention to. And a lot of people say, or the, even Ninja says, don't use olive oil, use canola. Well, I don't understand that. because Olive oil is 380, canola is 400. And I won't say the other things about some of these other oils. Some of them are great. But I use, and I always have, or, or I have for a long, long time, especially since these new devices have been on the market, avocado oil. There it is, 550 degrees. It's at the top of the list. And I'll say one other thing. Because of the ways I've pan seared steaks before, what you're going to find when you pan sear and you're using an oil, you're going to taste the oil. Now, some of them I haven't even tried. Some of them I have and they're okay. Some of them put a flavor on the steak that you are going to taste. Avocado, if there's any flavor at all, it's a good one. It's not bad. And I love it. But 550 degrees. Now, I will say also, I used this chart before on one of my others, and I didn't mention Mangrate. Now, I'm not affiliated. Nobody's paying me for nothing. I don't even have links on the bottom of my page. I mean, this is all Jelly 007 or John Sanders. Nobody's paid for anything, or I'm not, and I'm not affiliated with anyone completely, no one. But they have a pretty good product on there. I haven't ordered it yet, but I hadn't ruled it out. You'll see if you look, Mangrate, it's a thick grate for your grills, a really good idea because it's cast iron. That's what we're fixing to use. Or it's something similar to cast iron. I don't want to speak for their product. Let's take a look at it. But you could print this out if you wanted to, but you don't have to. Right there is a the top dog. And then there's others that are there. Of course, clarified butter would be fine too. But we're going to get off of that. Just wanted to touch on that. It's important in this because you're going to make smoke if you don't. Be back. Okay, so <clears throat> we're about to get started. We're going to use a meter block. I'll use one of these probes in that steak just to kind of watch it. You don't have to have it. I really don't think we need it. But <laughs> I want to be able to watch it. So we're going to watch the internal temp. It'll give us everybody some time to expect, too. Now, here's what I've done on the other two. I did a 390-degree cook and a 400-degree cook. And I didn't have any problems with smoke. And uh, it seemed to do fine. They were a little thinner. And I didn't like the complete sear I got. So I'm going to go a little warmer. We're going on air fry. And I'm going to set the temp to 425. Like I said, I did 390 one time and 400 the other. I'm going to leave it on 30 minutes. And the reason is because it uh, seems to me that it takes about 10 minutes for this skillet to get, once it preheats, it takes about 10 minutes for this skillet to get a regulated temp in the bottom. So we're going to let that count down to 20, and then we're going to put, these or put a steak in. And so I'm going to go ahead and set this in. And uh, be honest with you, it preheats so fast that I'm shocked it hadn't already started. It usually takes under a minute. It's amazing. So what I'm doing right now, I'm fixing to get the probe in the steak. I'm going to spray it with some avocado oil and some salt and pepper. And we're going to drop it in that preheated steak at, say, when it starts counting down to 20 minutes. Be right back. Okay, so <clears throat> right before I put the steak in, I spray it with, with avocado and kind of get it all over because I'm going to put the seasoning all over, but no crisis. And that's all. I don't spray the... I haven't been spraying the pan. I'm not sure that's a thing I may start doing, but for the record, I haven't been. All I've been spraying is the steak. So now we're going to season it <clears throat> with salt and pepper, and that is it. And I'm going to intentionally mist it around the side just a little bit so I can get those edges because it's fairly thick steak, and I want to do that. And I'm going to let that sit just a minute on that, just like that. And then I'm going to flip it over, do the other side. I'll be ready to put it in. It says 23, 22, so we got about three more minutes. All right, now all I'm going to do is pick it up and kind of, like I said, kind of get these edges and flip it over. Spray it one more time with some avocado oil just because... <laughs> Not a big deal. That's the side I'm going to put down, by the way. I'm going to put a little salt on it. And some cracked black or some fresh ground pepper. 
And that is all it's getting right there. We've got a minute and 42 seconds. We're going to put it in that pan. Okay, so we are close enough. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to take a reading on the pan just because I want to know too. And it is 469, 471 right in the center. 482 out on the edges. Whatever how, ever what it is, we're going... Well, I was going to put the other side down, but... Because I only have one hand, I can do that in. I'm going to put it in, kind of press it down. Slide it up in there. Get the door closed. And we are good to go. And we're going to flip it quite often, so I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so we're going to flip it at three minutes. But, and I, but this temp's going up so fast, I can't help but believe I've got it stuck wrong because three minutes it shouldn't be 117 degrees so we're going to kind of look at that too but here we go i'm going to raise take it out of there and yeah evidently i've got it at a downward angle but we're going to flip it over right now and we're going to raise the temp to, to top temp because we're air frying and we're pan frying and uh it's it's been working excellent so we're going to take the temp the 450 and let it go but anyhow, that temp's got to be wrong. I, I'm no, I know it's nowhere near 121. It's something I got wrong. But we're not going to kind of disregard that and start watching the steak. And I'll use the uh, my thermo pen in just a minute. All right, we're going to take a look at it at roughly four minutes of time in the in here, and you can see it's starting to brown a little bit, and it's doing fantastic. Like I said, we're flipping it a lot to keep it cooking even. I think that helps it cook even. And we got, whoops, got the pan out. But anyhow, we'll let it go another four minutes. We'll look at it again. Be back. Okay, a couple of things. One, <clears throat> the meter completely turned off just a minute ago. I'm not really sure why, because I just put new batteries in it. I may have an issue because it also says it's 153. Now, and I may be shocked. It, I think it's partially my problem i stuck it in wrong but here's another thing i want to show you why i'm using an air fry instead of a lot of people are going to say you know why didn't you use air broil well high heat from top it doesn't heat the bottom and i want that skillet heated all the time and you got high heat from top and bottom with an air fry this is a little hotter but 450 should be hot enough so we're at the point to flip it and that's what i'm about to do as soon as i find my Tongs, here they are. Open it up, pull it out, and you can see it looks excellent. It's, it's going to be excellent. I'm going to flip it over like that right there. Get it back in there. And let it go a few more minutes. Be back. Okay, so we're going to do a couple of things right here. One, I'm going to open it up, pull it out. I mean, it looks excellent. We're going to flip it over just because it's time to be flipped. I think flipping it a lot helps it cook it more even. We're also going to take a reading with the thermopen because that didn't work out. And again, that's probably my bad. 146. It's, it's, it is done. There's no doubt. One. Let's see where I'm going to get all the way. The lowest reading I get is 148. And that's plenty all I want. So what we're going to do is set it out of here. And then I'm going to put a little butter in the bottom of that pan. And we're going to make something for toast. Now i got to move some stuff. So I'm going to close this up. Now what I'm doing with the butter is, one, kind of mixing it around a little bit with my... Uh, and this could be done different. Again, this is like the third time I've done it. But I think butter helps steak. And I like to put it on it. And I'm going to put toast in there. I'm going to pour some of that out. Once this goes on just a little bit, we're going to melt that butter. We're going to, going to kind of baste the steak with, with the butter and the steak fat. Make sure you can see what I'm doing. And kind of close. But it's simple. And you don't even have to do this step, obviously. I'm just doing it because I want a little butter in there. I'm going to pour some of it off into this <clears throat> Pyrex dish. But mainly, I'm just going to baste this steak just a little bit while it rests in that hot pan. Because it's, it's hot. It, it's hotter than I'd normally eat a steak. So I'm just going to put a little bit of 
butter flavor on that steak and we're going to put it in that plate. And I am going to check that temp one more time. But right now, I'm going to get my act together and move this over to the plate because I don't want it cooking any longer. And that skillet's still plenty hot. But what we're fixing to do is toast some bread. But that right there, I'm telling you, is what a lot of restaurants do in a skillet. And again, a little bit of tweaking with this, and you could have one of the best uh, you'll ever have. So we got a little butter flavor in there. I'm going to just kind of mix it up with that steak fat and pour a little bit of it out. But I'm not big on pouring a lot of it out. We'll put that back right there. And while this steak rests, I'm going to put some brioche bread in it and let that soak that up. And we're going to set it in there and hit toast. So I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so the steak is right at 136. There's 140. 143 so it's a little warmer than i normally take them to but as you can see it looks perfect and you can pull it way earlier than i did we cooked it a little over 15 minutes but this bread right here is fixing to be some of the best stuff you've ever ate now i did put it in there what i didn't pour off with that butter and i kind of mopped it around and uh the ninja just completed the 20 minute thing we are what we had left on our cook i'm going to take it to toast and i'm going to leave it on i'm going to put it on we'll just leave it right there because that toast is already in that hot skillet and four minutes we're going to watch it for the four minutes and and turn that toast one time and i think you're going to find by the time that's done this steak is going to be some kind of excellent Okay, so we've ran the, pretty much the whole four minutes of the toast on this, and with so much fat and all on it, it does not hurt it. In fact, it can handle more than you would think. It gets a little mushy because it, it's in the uh, fat. It's in fat and butter. So we're going to go with that another time, and it's no problem because the steak's fine. It's sitting there resting. We're going to put it right here, and I'm going to take it back to toast. In fact, this time I'm going to raise the uh, darkness to, we're going to say three. Okay, I'm going to, let's take a look. It's got to be getting close. I think setting it to that dark setting did help. Well, you can see it is definitely darker. So we're going to put, pull this out, put it on the plate. And uh, that's some good, uh, healthy, <laughs> fattening bread. We'll put that right here where it can help help that cool down. And we're going to get this right here ready to eat. the The toast is is ex is excellent, and I'm sure the steak's going to be too. Okay, let's see what it looks like right here. And even at one whatever it was, one forty something, I don't remember. But you can see that is there's nothing wrong with that steak. That steak is excellent, and it's not overcooked by any means. And uh, like I said, if I was do anything different, I would go ahead and go to the 450 because I did not get any smoke. Anyhow, I'm going to sit down, and I'm going to take a bite of it while y'all still watching. Y'all hold up. Okay, so for the taste test, and uh, I don't think I need to tell you, it is absolutely excellent. I'm going to take a little bitty bite because I don't want to try and chew up a big piece of steak. I'm fixing to eat the whole thing, so. And as you might expect, I was going to say, it's absolutely excellent. The toast is almost worth making the recipe just for the toast. It's that good. Now, I'm going to work on it a little bit. I mean, it needs a little tweaking. One is next time I'll go to 450. And with, I got no smoke at 425, none. I mean, there was none in the house at all. So 450 would have seared it or browned it a little better, but there was nothing, well, you saw it. There was nothing wrong with the way it looked. Just because I'm going to tinker with stuff. I think you'll find this will be the way you go to making steaks. I promise you. It is a, 
the way many, many re high-end restaurants do. They pan fry, and uh, you, it, it's just a great way to cook a steak. And, and plus, you can control a lot of things, plus the, like putting butter on it and all. It's kind of hard to do that on a grill. Anyhow, thank you for watching my video, and uh, I hope you try this recipe and you find it as good as I did. Again, don't forget to use the avocado. I think that's the trick with this one especially. So I'll put a big head right here for y'all to touch and subscribe if you don't mind. And I'll put a video somewhere. And uh, y'all come back to see me. Hey, I love y'all all. And y'all cook you a steak in your air fryer. Pan fried steak in your air fryer. How about that? I think it's neat and it works well. Y'all have a good night. Bye-bye.